Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Daniel Perry? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. It's quite brief. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. In July of 2020, Daniel Perry was a sergeant in the United States Army. He lived in Colleen, Texas, which is about an hour and 20 minutes north of Austin. To make extra money, Daniel drove for Uber. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On July 25, 2020, 30-year-old Daniel was in Austin, Texas. He was operating his black Hyundai Elantra for Uber. Daniel dropped off a customer and was supposed to drive nearby and wait on another notification from the company. So he was supposed to go somewhere and wait for instructions. At 9.50 p.m., Daniel made a right turn from 4th Street onto Congress Avenue and encountered a number of protesters. Most of them were part of the Black Lives Matter movement. The protesters were there because of the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which occurred exactly two months earlier. Daniel stopped his vehicle and honked his horn, as if to indicate he wanted to pass through that area. The protesters surrounded his vehicle and struck it multiple times, which included throwing objects. A 28-year-old Air Force veteran named Garrett Foster approached the driver's side window of Daniel's vehicle. Garrett was carrying an AK-47 rifle. This was legal in the state of Texas. Garrett motioned as if he wanted Daniel to roll down his window, which Daniel did. At this point, Daniel produced a 357 Magnum revolver and shot Garrett five times. Four of the bullets penetrated Garrett's body. Apparently, one of the bullets was blocked by cell phones in his pocket. Garrett Foster did not survive. A person in the crowd started firing at Daniel's vehicle, striking it three times. Daniel drove to safety and called the police. The police arrived and spoke to Daniel. He explained his reasoning for shooting Garrett, indicating that it was self-defense. He claimed that Garrett had raised the barrel of the AK-47. Daniel said, quote, I believe he was going to aim at me. I did not want to give him a chance to aim at me, unquote. About a year later, in July 2021, Daniel was indicted on charges of murder and aggravated assault. In April of 2023, Daniel Perry was found not guilty of aggravated assault, but guilty of murder. At the time making this video, Daniel was facing between five years and life in prison. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, has directed the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles to quickly consider recommending a pardon for Daniel. Greg Abbott intends to approve the pardon the moment he receives it from the board. In the state of Texas, the governor cannot initiate a pardon without a recommendation from the board. Now moving to my analysis. There is a lot of controversy surrounding the Daniel Perry case. Clearly, the jury believed he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Other people believe that his prosecution was political in nature. This takes me to the question, was Daniel Perry actually guilty of murder? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Daniel was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Garrett Foster was legally carrying the AK-47. The weapon did not have a cartridge in the chamber, and the safety was engaged. Some witnesses at the scene of the shooting said that Garrett did not raise the barrel of his gun. Daniel never claimed that Garrett actually pointed the AK-47 at him. Rather, Daniel stated that he thought Garrett was going to, like he was in the process of trying to point it. Daniel should have known that the protests were going on before he turned right on Congress Avenue. It doesn't make sense that he drove toward them and close to them. It's almost like he was trying to deliberately provoke a confrontation. Honking the horn probably did not help either. Daniel created several direct messages and posts on social media that did not look too good for him. Statements made prior to the shooting make it seem as though he was interested in shooting protesters. A few examples... Daniel posted, quote, I might have to kill a few people on my way to work. They are rioting outside my apartment complex, unquote. 
When a friend responded, can you legally do so? Daniel replied, quote, if they attack me or try to pull me out of my car, then yes, unquote. Daniel wrote, quote, I might go to Dallas to shoot looters, unquote. He advised people on how to shoot other people, recommending that they aim for center mass. He posted a statement suggesting that this was the time for people to take up arms and protect themselves from violence. He suggested that protesters should be sent to Texas and said, quote, we will show them why you don't mess with Texas, unquote. Daniel stated that a person could shoot protesters and claim self-defense, thereby escaping the consequences of the shooting. Moving to the exculpatory factors, witnesses stated that Garrett used the AK-47 to motion to Daniel. It is reasonable to believe that he was moving the barrel up in the air. This motion is also consistent with a person attempting to point a gun at someone. Daniel's defense argued that three witnesses said that Garrett was holding the AK-47 parallel to the ground. An image of Garrett captured right before the shooting could be interpreted as Garrett getting ready to point the rifle. As far as Garrett's weapon having an empty chamber and having the safety engaged, Garrett might have been using the rifle to intimidate Daniel. Therefore, it did not matter if the weapon was in a condition to be fired. Garrett never intended to shoot Daniel, but Daniel would not have known that. Daniel would have assumed that if the trigger of the AK-47 was pulled, the weapon would have discharged. It was not Daniel's responsibility to ascertain the condition of Garrett's firearm. How would that even be possible? So Daniel was supposed to roll down the window and say to Garrett, Good evening, kind sir. I noticed you're carrying a rifle during the midst of this protest. Can I ask you about your policy regarding keeping a cartridge in the chamber of the weapon? And please, let's talk about the safety. Law enforcement officers who testified agreed that they would have shot someone who raised the rifle in their direction. Some of the protesters admitted that they were overly aggressive. One even confessed to kicking Daniel's vehicle before the shooting. Other protesters beat on Daniel's vehicle. The protesters were causing a climate of dangerousness. They placed Daniel in fear for his safety. Another Uber driver who was in the area called the protest the scariest experience of his life. He said that Garrett holding the AK-47 caused him to fear for himself and others. The lead detective in the shooting investigation testified for the defense, saying that Daniel had a legitimate argument for self-defense. In addition, the detective accused the prosecutor of forcing him to remove exculpatory evidence in a presentation to the grand jury. One of the protesters fired at Daniel's vehicle four times, striking it three times. This individual was never charged with a crime even though they could not have known whether Daniel fired in self-defense or not. This makes the prosecutor seem biased in favor of the protesters. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Daniel Perry was guilty? I believe that he was guilty in reality, but I do not believe that he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A lot of the testimony in this case simply cannot be trusted. Clearly, the protesters were at a significant risk of being biased against Daniel Perry. The conflicting accounts of what happened reveal potential deception, or it's possible they really don't know what happened. The situation was chaotic. There's no way to know if Garrett lifted the barrel of his rifle or not. This creates reasonable doubt. The burden is on the state to prove that Daniel was guilty. As far as the argument about Daniel instigating the protesters, well, he had every right to be there, just like they did. The law says that a person cannot provoke a situation and then claim self-defense. What happens when both sides are instigators? I think that is what happened here. The protesters and Daniel Perry were both taking chances. They were both looking for a fight. When Daniel drove on Congress Avenue, the protesters should have let him pass peacefully. It didn't matter if he was honking his horn or not. They did not have the right to surround his vehicle and physically strike it. As far as my belief that Daniel was guilty in reality, this is based on his many messages about shooting protesters. Here's what I think happened in this case. This is just a theory, my opinion. Daniel Perry was angry at the protesters because he did not support their cause. He viewed them as lawless individuals who were terrorizing innocent people. He didn't like that they were blocking the traveled portion of the roadway and interfering with the peaceful residents of Austin. Daniel realized that if he drove anywhere near the protesters, 
they would respond aggressively. He planned on using this irrational response to justify shooting one of them. When Daniel drove onto Congress Avenue, he was able to obtain his wish. Not only did the protesters surround and attack his vehicle, one of them, Garrett Foster, approached the driver's side of the vehicle carrying a rifle. Garrett then made some type of motion with the rifle. From Daniel's perspective, this could not have gone any better. This is exactly what he wanted. He now believed he possessed a license to kill. Daniel Perry did not waste any time in shooting Garrett Foster. Daniel fired five times to make sure that Garrett would not be testifying against him later. Now moving to my final thoughts. This is a case where people acted unwisely on both sides. The protesters created a dangerous situation by breaking the law. They had no right to surround Daniel's vehicle or to strike it. Garrett Foster was not a law enforcement officer. He did not have the right to direct traffic. He had no reason to engage with Daniel. I believe that Garrett was trying to intimidate Daniel. Garrett was looking for trouble. Unfortunately for him, he found it. For Daniel's part, he was also looking for trouble and was able to find it. The killing of Garrett was completely unnecessary. It was caused by stubborn people on both sides looking to make a point. The only point they ended up making was how bad decisions can lead to tragedy. Those are my thoughts on the case of Daniel Perry. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.